so the Concept OK Focus exhibit is going to be four artists from Oklahoma and then four artistic projects from Kansas City area artists. Um, the curator for this area, Liza Statton, really met with a lot of artists to try to figure out who would be best together um, for this first focus exhibition. She toured 11 studios in Oklahoma, she toured 10 studios in Kansas City before she chose the projects, and she really was interested in what are those intersections between their ideas? Are there materials, are there different approaches that could could have some kind of connection. And she ended up feeling like there, everything was pretty fluid in the way the artists were approaching their work, but that there was almost a network, um, a map that connected the different projects. And so even though we have sculpture, we have you know, um, multimedia constructions, we have video, um, that there's some connection between their ideas. It was interesting when Liza Staten approached the project she ended up selecting, she really felt like all of them were trying to engage their viewers that all of them are trying to provoke their viewers somehow. So um, pushing their viewers to examine themselves, to look at how they live, to look at contemporary life. Um, and so she saw that as a connection between all of them, that they invite the viewers and engage them in a different way. My name is Grace Gerthaus and I'm a synthetic landscape artist. I went to the Kansas City Art Institute for undergrad and once I moved to the Midwest, I started to get really interested in aerial landscape, and that's when my, uh, my love of landscape began. The first time that I was flying to the Midwest, and I'm looking out the airplane, the cities, they reminded me of something. They looked like circuit boards. And I thought that was kind of unusual, and it, it kind of stuck in my mind, and the more I thought about it, I thought, well, you know, we don't build cities for the way they look, we build them for their function. So maybe something about that expediency of the way we build is almost like a visualization of the way we think. It's a map of our brains in a way. So I got very interested in mapping and landscape systems and both organic and industrial, what we build and then the things that are just uh, inherent to the earth, separate from people entirely. More recently I've started to get interested in the idea of the internet as well. That the internet is a map of the way we think and another system that should be looked at. Um, and, and in fact, computers and the internet are shaping now the world we live in, the physical world. So we're getting to a place where the virtual is bridging the gap into the physical. Part of the inspiration for this new line of inquiry has been some research that I've been doing into a movement called the New Aesthetic. Um, there's a tech theorist named James Brendel and he's been doing a blog and a series of lectures about this new aesthetic where he's talking about different examples in design, art, architecture, um, tech, across the board, where you can see um, this digital aesthetic now becoming physical. One thing I'm always amazed with Grace is she is an incredible reader and explorer and studier. So like when she's creating her work, she doesn't just sit down and imagine it. She, her studio is full of books about not just art, but about uh, virtual reality, about technology, about history, about mapping. So she's trying to examine different sources and it really feeds how her, her work comes together. With the compositions that I'm choosing now, I'm backing down away from aerial images and moving to a street level. And I'm picking street scenes in cities where you can really get a sense of the expansiveness of a city. So you can go on a walk, a short walk from the gallery, and at specific places that I've designated via a map and an app, you can pull out your phone and through the camera of your phone, you can see the painting hovering in layers and you can kind of walk around and see in between the layers there in real space. Grace's work is really fascinating because she's combining this kind of virtual experience with this real life experience. So there's going to be this application and how will people be looking at the world? They'll be looking at it through their smartphones. So she has a strong ability to, you know, in design and also in materials to make things look good. But then for her to push that and stretch her idea and try to figure out how that connects to the world. You know, she's taking these actual places and reformulating them um, through an, a different aesthetic. And then it's going to help people experience them in a totally different way. And I love that it's physical and virtual. Um, she's really trying to grapple with how are we experiencing place now? How do we experience spaces? And we'll get to see it through her eyes. So with the finished paintings, I'm trying to kind of strip away the exterior layer and allow you to see, not an x-ray vision, but um, try and see a little bit of the systems underlying uh, both the 
the Slidian geometry of what we try and build with our cities and also kind of the fractal geometry of the green spaces and then uh, all the people in the hustle and bustle just give you a sense of that. What I start with are photographs and then I stitch them together into panoramas using Photoshop. Um, and then from that I print on acetate a photographic image and that's one by three foot typically for this series. From that image I then start building the layers of the painting and I cut away through some layers of plastic, I build up paint on other layers, it becomes a very mixed media, almost sculptural way of painting. After the composition is done, I then set it aside, photograph each layer individually and then all together and then those photographs uh, get a tag through Quailcom, which is the software development package that we're using to do this. And then that tag is embedded into the code and it's referred back to you and so that when the software basically says, when I see this street corner through the camera on your phone, I will show this first layer. And then when you tap the screen, I'll show the second layer. When I tap the screen again, I'll show the third layer. And then you get all three layers of the painting. And then you can move your phone around and as you're walking, you can move it around and you can see sort of all the way to the edges of the painting and in between the layers. So it's, it becomes a very sculptural experience. There's two aspects of working in augmented reality that are very exciting to me. And one is that it shifts you out of the gallery space. You can walk through the city and you're at a walking pace and you're experiencing all the sights and smells on your own. And then you get to see this painting hovering in real life, which is fantastic. Um, but additionally, what I'll be able to do is print out pictures of those street corners on, say, like a small print that could be carried with you. Um, and then you'll be able to see the painting hovering in layers on top of that. And you could, you know, hold your postcard upside down and see it, you know, define gravity if, I, if you want. But it becomes a portable carrying piece of art that you could buy and take with you, which is exciting too.